In this video we will talk about electric field lines and the field lines are what gives us a way to visualize the shape of an electric field around a charged particle or around a group of charged particles. Michael Faraday referred to the field lines as lines of force and he actually thought that some kind of microscopic lines or tubes or something of that nature was coming out of charged particles. So for example if we have a positively charged object we can draw the field around it as lines like this and they have direction so we put the arrowheads on the end and they're pointing away from a positive charge like that. And if you have a smaller charge placed in the field like this charge Q this charge would get pushed away because of the electric force of the larger charge. So we think of this electric field E as exerting the force on charge Q here. So because the field exerts the force on the charge we think of these field lines which represent the field as lines of force and that's a commonly used term lines of force. When you hear that term it's just referring to the electric field lines the lines that are drawn to help us visualize the electric field. Now scientists today don't think they are actual little tubes or pipes or something or some kind of actual physical lines or filaments of some kind coming out from the charge but we still draw pictures like this because they are a very helpful way of picturing the electric field in one's mind and picturing the shape of it. And there's some simple rules for drawing these field lines. And the first thing to know if you want to draw the electric field is that around a smaller charge there will be fewer field lines. So I'll draw some charged particles here and picture this. Around a, a smaller charge, there's less charge here, we would draw fewer lines. So where there was more charge, we would draw more lines. And you can see that in these pictures. So what happens as a result of this is the lines get bunched closer together. And where the lines are bunched closer together, that represents a more intense electric field. You can think of the density of the lines where the lines are more dense the field is stronger and the field is stronger around a charge that has a larger magnitude of charge, a larger amount of charge. So that's the first the first concept as far as drawing the field lines go. More charge, draw more field lines. The next thing I'll say is this the field lines point outward around a positive charge and they will point inward around a negative charge. And the reason for that is because the direction of the electric field is defined as the direction of the force that the field will exert on a positive test charge. So if I imagine taking this little tiny charge that I'm going to call a test charge, you could think of it as an individual proton and let's say I drop it right here. Well, this proton will be pushed away because of the positive charge there. The proton, remember, is positive. The test charge we always think of as being positive. And the proton will be pushed away, so the direction of the field at that point is away from the positive charge. A proton would be attracted toward a negative charge, so the direction of the field is inward toward a negative charge. The direction of the field is defined as the direction of the force that that field would exert on a little positive test charge. So it's defined in terms of a positive charge. If you were to put a negative charge in the field, it would move in the direction opposite the field lines. So again, think of it as the, the direction of the field being defined as the direction of the force it would exert, exert on a positive charge. It would exert a force in the opposite direction on a negative charge. If you were to put a little electron, say right here, the electron would be repelled. It would be pushed away by this larger negative charge. And the white lines there represent the field. The electron is pushed in the opposite direction of the field. Now some things to note. Let me draw a charged object here and I'll draw some field lines around it. In this case pointing outward. The field is stronger where the lines are closer together. So in here, in this region close to the charge, you can see these field lines are spaced more closely, or they're spaced closer together. And that visually represents a more intense field. You know that as you move away from the charge, 
the electrostatic force decreases because the electrostatic force behaves according to an inverse square law. The force weakens with distance. And we see that as we move away from this charge, these field lines are spaced farther apart. And so that gives us a visual picture of the field being weaker further, further away from this positive charge. Uh, another thing to note is the, that the field exists everywhere, not just where I've drawn the lines. So if I have a point here, for example, in between two of the field lines, this point right here, just because it's a, a field line isn't touching it doesn't mean there's no, no field there. The, the lines of force that we draw are not a perfect represent, representation of the field. The field really exists continuously all around the charge. And even though the field lines aren't a perfect way to represent it, they're st still a very helpful way to rep represent the electric field. And third, note that the electric field is three-dimensional. This picture right here is flat. What you really need to do is picture these field lines extending in three dimensions. The field permeates space, not just a plane.